I'm here in the new chestnut grove that I'm starting here, inspired by last year's discovery of that beautiful one in the foreground there with the blue tape hanging from it, which is 200 years old. I made a video about it. Actually, I made two videos about it. If you don't know about it, check out those videos and then come back. Speaking of which, it'd be a good idea for you to check out this whole series. There's a playlist, give you some background. So anyways, I'm here and first off, I planted these two that have the white tubes around them here. I got those from the Chestnut Council of Canada because the chestnuts that I'm growing from seed, I only get a handful per year. Hopefully that number is gonna be going up soon. But I needed more because I'm doing a lot of planting this year. So I got some from the Chestnut Council of Canada. If you want to plant some chestnuts, talk to them. If you are in the United States, talk to the American Chestnut Council or the, I don't know what it's called, the United States Chestnut Council, I don't know. I only know the Chestnut Council of Canada, but I know that there's one in the United States as well. So hopefully they can set you up with some seedlings like the ones here. I contributed to the library, if you will, that they are creating their seedlings from from my now gone queen chestnut tree. I guess we'll call her the queen mother because she has a baby now that she's gone. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. But before I do that, I want to take the next step here with this newly discovered one that has this barrier around it to keep the deer out. That it's actually grown some leaves through the holes in the mesh. This is going to be rather difficult because the mesh is pretty fine, but I can, <laughs> with some ravaging, get the leaves out before I remove this cover so that I can get into it. There we go. Yeah, there's some leaves down here that are going to be harmed as well. And I don't know yet which leaves are going to be staying because there are multiple shoots growing in here and it's time to choose only one of them. And so I don't want to ravage, completely destroy the leaves on the wrong leader that I want to save. So, there we go. Hopefully I can remove that now without too much damage. There we go, not too bad, not too bad at all. So I'm going to reposition the camera so you can see what I'm about to do. Unfortunately, there was a camera failure and I don't know how much of this footage was captured. So I'm going to do a review of what I have just done that you may not be able to see. There was a cluster of young trees here and I selected only these two to survive and the reason why is because this one was the best candidate no sign of the blight anywhere and nice and healthy and this one is much smaller equally beautiful and healthy but there's a distance dividing them and i think it's sufficient that next year I'll be able to carefully extricate this one 
and transplant it without harming this one. These are very special because they sprouted up from this long gone, at least 100 years gone, massive chestnut tree. And this shows something that I want to talk to you about. And that is that the blight only affects the part of the tree that's above the ground. The existence of these is proof of that. The original chestnut tree that stood here so long ago, when it was succumbing to the blight over a hundred years ago, that's when this beautiful giant bitternut hickory started to grow and their root systems connected. And when the chestnut succumbed to the blight, the root system was kept alive for all of this time by this wonderful, friendly, bitternut hickory. There are no other large trees that are over a hundred years old right nearby. This is the only one. So it's obvious, plus the fact that they're right beside each other. So that root system has survived for all of this time and when these new shoots came up, after I opened up the area here a little bit for the snowshoe trail, and when the sunlight hit this, it triggered it and said, okay, it's time to send up new shoots now. These are ready to face the blight. And they are part of that root system. It is their roots. And it already knows about the blight. This is so critical. This is so incredibly important. This is not just about the chestnut, the American chestnut and the chestnut blight. This is about all trees. This is clearly something that has happened countless times over the existence of trees on Earth, where they are subject to a, another blight, whatever it is that affected them over the billions of years, maybe not billions, maybe one billion, I'm not sure exactly off the top of my head how long trees have existed as a life form. But at any rate, at least hundreds of millions of years, this has happened over and over again. This is just another example. So, this is really important now for the continuing adaptation of the chestnut. And it's so critical for you to know this, that the key to these young seedlings, well, they're not seedlings, sprouts, <laughs> The seed for these was planted 200 years ago. The key for the very high probability that these young shoots are going to mature and survive the blight is the fact that the parent, if you will, the source, the source of these, has laid dormant for over a hundred years. It doesn't have to be a hundred years, but you just have to find shoots that are coming out of one that is long dead, at least decades. Not dead, but see, I, I'm going to need a new word for this because source of these is not dead. It did not die. You see? The blight didn't kill this. The blight destroyed, it toppled 
the above ground part of the tree, but the roots stayed alive. So, I want to show you now another one with some new information. This is another of the chestnuts that came up along the edge of the property here. This one is much larger <laughs> and it's beautiful. And there's an interesting thing about this. It's doing exactly the same thing as that one. And it's actually, this is at least the third generation because you can see the remains of the second generation that achieved that sort of pole size and then died. And now here comes this one and it's so beautiful and it's very interesting. There seems to be a connection with bitter nut hickory because that's the nearest large neighbor again is this bitter nut hickory. This one is not a hundred years old, but that one is, and it's quite a distance. But this is the thing, is unfortunately, this forest was logged to plant all of these red pines. I'm in the, on the edge of the front area. And that was done about 60 years ago. And so undoubtedly, if there was a very large, and it could have been a red oak as well, who knows what it was, whatever it was that originally kept this chestnut alive is gone now because of that logging. This bitter nut is definitely 60 years old. And so it seems to me that what we have here is just the interconnectedness. It's not just one on one. When there are many trees, they will be connecting. It's, it's like their internet. And so this has been kept alive. And that version failed and it probably failed because of that logging 60 years ago to plant these red pines. Wow, I just made all of those connections right now. It's amazing. It's such an incredible gift from this forest to give me these opportunities to make new insights, to learn new things just by connecting the dots, making careful observations, being aware and seeing these things. Wow. Wow. That's all I can say. And we have another example here, just like what I showed you over there. This is another one. It's about a foot and a half away. And so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to try to separate this out. And it's interesting because this is coming from the other side of this, the remains of the, the dead pole from the last attempt. Now here's the thing. I want to now go next door and show you something else. I'm in the property next door to mine, which is owned by the Long Point Basin Land Trust. They just bought it a couple years ago, but I found this chestnut years before that. And it's growing in a strange spot here, not far from the 200 year old that I was talking about earlier, but it's on the boundary of an area that the prior landowner tried to convert to black oak savanna, and it didn't really work. It requires a lot of maintenance and controlled burns 
and thinning of other trees, etc. That wasn't done. And so now the land trust is trying to do that. I hope they can succeed. But anyways, this, when I found it many years ago, I took down this big Scots pine that was right beside it and shading it and there was very little light. And it responded so beautifully over the next few years. And now it's dying. The leaves are all turning brown. It doesn't help that we're in the midst of a raging drought. It has not rained one drop of rain here in almost two months. Unheard of for spring. It's the first week of June and we're in the grip of a relentless drought. And so this tree is not withstanding these conditions. And I think it's being made worse by the fact that it's surrounded by black oaks, completely surrounded, and there are no big, mature, there's no single tree anywhere around here. I cannot see anywhere. There we go, way back there. <laughs> it's a red oak. There's a red oak, but it's at least 50 feet away, if not more. So undoubtedly, when this was cleared to make it into a tobacco farm, also presumably about 60 years ago or so, whatever the trees were that supported this oak originally, because this is a sucker from a dead, I still have to come up with that new term for the root system that's under my feet. So here's the thing, without having that support system, that sister, there's not a lot of strength here. And so this tree has given up and it's sending up two new suckers. Actually, make that three. Two of them are beautiful here, already more than two feet tall and it's the first week of June. And so this has given up on the top and it's sending up new ones. This is desperation. I can't see any blight here. It's just too weak to withstand these incredibly harsh conditions of this ridiculous drought. So more action needs to be taken here to be continued.